10 surprising facts about Norman Rockwell. Norman Rockwell was born in New York City and lived for most of his young life in a city. He was not a small town boy. And in his early life, when he was training as an artist, he became very inspired by European art. In fact, he was inspired by the Sistine Chapel and specifically Michelangelo's depiction of the prophet Isaiah and the hand gesture when he was planning his depiction of Rosie the Riveter. Three, Rockwell took great pride in being as factual as possible with his paintings. And so he would photograph scenes and have minute details like the glasses of this watchsmith, which look a little bit fantastical, but were the kind of glasses watchsmiths might wear. Rockwell loved to tell a story with his artworks, but he expected his viewers to do some of the work. So here we have the story of a cobbler who's about to fix the shoes of a doll. Notice the doll is missing one shoe. But then look closer. The cobbler is so busy he doesn't even have time to repair his own shoes. In this painting, a young man comes home from graduating. You can see the tassel peeking out of his bag. At this age, however, Norman Rockwell had a very different experience. He was working from when he was 19 years old as an editor for a magazine. Rockwell did 321 covers for the Saturday Evening Post. The April Fool's ones were said to be some of the favorite. Here you can see a man fishing without water and with an albatross on April 1st, 1945. Rockwell usually started his compositions with a photograph. He would take the photograph and then usually adapt the photograph for his final composition. Scroll back and notice all the tiny little differences. Rockwell sketched extensively. Almost every painting has a preview sketch. Rockwell's self-portrait as the three ages of man has an interesting detail. This artwork has three portraits of Norman Rockwell and three portraits of famous artists. First, at the top, there is Dürer, uh, the famous German Renaissance artist. And then in the middle, there is Rembrandt with his poofy hat. And then, and then at the bottom, there is the self-portrait of Van Gogh. The only one of the featured artworks at the side of his canvas that's not a self-portrait is this one by Picasso, which is a portrait of a woman. Rockwell loved to show the artist working often highlighting the stress of making art. Here an artist has a pipe. He's so stressed, he's rubbing his hair with the paint part of a brush. And as you can see, it's because the due date is upon him and his luck has run out, if you can tell by the downturned horseshoe. Rockwell is often thought of as being very apolitical, but that is far from the truth. He was so moved when Ruby Bridges, as a young girl, desegregated schools in New Orleans, having to enter a school with a police escort because of the threat of violence. He depicted in this artwork in 1963, three years after Ruby started school. He so aptly called it the problem we all live with. The artwork was shown at the White House at the 50th anniversary of its making, and here is Ruby Bridges standing with Obama in front of the artwork. And Rockwell continued to depict these difficult scenes. We often forget how powerful Rockwell was at telling America what we really were like. 